that was the dude that got you caught up in this shit that wound up turning all the um wound up telling on dude there was a drug dealer or whatever. That was that was the situation that happened with um with the Chicago sh and uh me having to go in front of a grand jury and say that I got paid for doing a movie. The homie Daz, he just said on um he was on a homeboy show, he and Chuck Dizzle, homegrown radio. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them digital soapbox family. And he said he strong arm sugar to give them two and a half million dollars. He said he was high on mushrooms and up on that motherfucker with a screwdriver. Mm. Walked up in the office with a screwdriver, had everybody in the office hemmed up and should cut him a check for two and a half million dollars. So I guess dad said, I'm gonna get mine. I mean, some I mean, you know, de depending on on what life you come from. I mean everybody's had that uh that that situation to where they felt they had to, you know. Result. Have you ever had to run up in the label? Mm, I've never had to run up in a label, but I've had my confrontations with labels to where I've had to go uh, take my masters back and and put them on lockdown until they gave me my bread. Yeah. Or oh, is that right? So, hey, you was on some strong arms. It was like, I'm playing hardball with y'all motherfuckers. I yeah. My uh, um, owed me some money. I turned the record in. They said the budget was gone because somebody had took the money. So mm -hmm. I ran up to Bernie Grubman's, and before they could take the record, I walked back in there, and I snatched the masters. Let me ask you this. Did that person that got the money ever call you about it? No. But I dealt with the label directly, and they ended up cutting me a check for the masters. Mm -hmm. They was pretty mad about that. Shit, I'm they? pretty sure, but, you know, it's, it's what happened. Sneaky shit. You know what? That's the worst feeling in the world. We had a similar situation happen with glasses, right? To where we shooting a video in Atlanta, we shooting a haters video, right? And you know you got a budget there. You know how much money you got. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You think you got you a budget. You think you, yeah, got, a you, budget, think you got a budget. But you go there and they tell you, well, no, this was cut to this person. Yeah. And this was cut to that person. And the money ain't there no more. You like, what the hell? Yeah, that was those days where um, when niggas would hook you up or whatever, and they just felt like they were entitled to whatever your budget was. So if a nigga hooked you up with a label or a deal and and they tell you it's it's worth 250000 mm -hmm. niggas will start calling up to the label and being like, yeah, send me 50, send me 30, send me 40. Mm -hmm. And then you go up there and be thinking you're going to get money to finish your record or finish your project and most start telling you, oh, no, you know, we gave... 20,000 or so-and-so. We yeah. gave 30,000 to so-and-so. And and then it just be out of the blue, like, okay, but who authorized that? Yeah, it's for my real. deal, right? Mm -hmm. And they look at it like, well, so-and-so walked you in the door. Mm -hmm. So-and-so is the one that got you the deal. Mm -hmm. So when they called and they said they needed 40,000 out your budget, we just cut them a check. So that was the that was that was the relationships that some dudes had with well, uh, you, know, you know yeah because they were the um I guess they were the um sub label yeah yeah they were the sub label so a lot of people especially back during the nineties they were giving cats these pretty much these production company deals yeah, to they where they got production deals yeah they you, tell you you can we give you a three four album production deal mm -hmm. you can bring in two three different artists and we will give you a budget for every artist but then when that money hit the table niggas be like oh so and so got a hundred and twenty five. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take fifty off. Yeah, of and that. it it, it, it so could have been six. It could have been good situations though. Had people done, because I knew a whole bunch of cats that had those type of deals that really could have made a lot of money had they just really done right by the projects. Well, a lot of niggas was from the hoods and from the streets, and like I said, a lot of niggas weren't business savvy. Like a like some dudes who you see who are successful with mm -hmm. their labels. Some dudes looked at it as a money grab. You mm -hmm. get me? If I can go out here and I can get me a production deal for three albums for three different groups at three albums apiece, mm -hmm. that's about a million and some dollars sitting on the table. Yeah, it was so a lot of money made. It, it goes from if we do this shit right, 
everybody could be the successful, the label could be here. But it started going to, I don't know what I take it as. Sometimes I take it as jealousy or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I, I used to tell niggas all the time, niggas who sign you really don't want you to succeed. You get me? Especially if you're going through the subdivision label shit. Um, a lot of niggas aren't going to let you reach that status as them. You get me? So that's when you start noticing. My budget ain't as much as this, or I'm not getting this, or I'm not getting that. Mm -hmm. And some niggas forget, like, this is about the label. You get me? We try mm -hmm. to make the label successful. We want to be a Sony or a mm -hmm. Def Jam or whatever. But some niggas can't do that. Man, because people they too see busy that hitting fuck, licks. They see that money hit the table, and mm -hmm. they go, you know, you should give X is supposed to get this, Y is supposed to get this, and Z is supposed to get that. And niggas start going, I'm going to take from them. It? I'm going to take from them. Uh, I'm going to take from them. You get me? And, and it's a situation, man, pretty much similar to what, you know, what the podcast people are doing and stuff like that, right? And this is what people don't understand. I have no, I have no problem with saying that you are a way bigger celebrity than me. Right. You have more popularity than me. What sense would it make for you to find out later on? Because you go find out that, oh man, still went and picked up $400,000 and only gave me, you know, whoompty wham. Yeah. You could be pissed off. You could feel some kind of way. More than likely, our partnership go in. Definitely. So my thing is this. No, I'll do the right thing. We get this. Hey, here go your half, my nigga. This is what we got. Boom. Definitely. And you play fair by stuff. You know what I mean? So with the hopes so we can continue making more money yeah, instead some, of hitting the lick right some now. Some niggas don't look at it like that, which is unfortunate. Some dudes will tell you that and, and like I said, at the end of the day, it all comes down to when that check hits the table. And you'll be y'all, you'll be talking and talking and be like, oh man, they finna give us half a million and I'm gonna get two fifty and you gonna get two fifty and woom de woom. And then next thing you know, that check hit the table and niggas start going. And you don't got fifty thousand, I ain't seen nothing yeah, else from it. Be like, shoot, you know. Well, I could really take this and do this and then tip this and blah, 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 and I can give him that and whoop de woop. Which ain't the smart play, man, because it's, like I it's, said. It's, it shouldn't be the smart play because the smart play should be if everything stays on the up and up, you'll see how successful and far this shit goes. Mm -hmm. A lot of shit falls apart when somebody start going, I think I should get more. In the next. And people start looking at it with a lick mentality instead of a business mentality. Yeah. That's why it's like, you know what? We got this in. Hey, hey, we got this money in. Here go yours. Here go mine. And, you know, that's that's the way it should be because what happens when this happens? Because it's going to happen. What happens when you on a business call and we got to go talk to the people together or something like that? And they telling you all this stuff. You looking yeah. like that's news to me. Yeah, I didn't I, know that we don't made we don't made a couple million I dollars mean, and we ain't I seen mean, nothing. You know, you go through situations like that. I've had that happen to me a few times. You get me dealing with a f***ed up lawyer or a crooked whatever, mm -hmm. and then you get on the phone with the label, and next thing you know, they get to telling you, "Well, we sent out a check for fifteen, and we sent out a check for three, and we sent out a check for seven. And they looking at you like you the one spending all this money. And, and I'm looking at a mother like, "Well, when did that check come in?" Cause I didn't get it, mm -hmm. and then and then it, it's really worse when they send you a breakdown and send you a mother fax, and and then there's all the copies of the checks that they yeah. done paid a month. Let me ask you something. I know you gonna be politically correct, cause you don't like putting people on blast. Who was the most shysty? What was the most shysty? Um, I, I can't even call them record labels, but um. Executive you worked up on the ghetto exec. Who who was the most shysty ghetto exec you ever worked for? I have to be honest, the most shysty person I've ever dealt with as far as in business was my attorney. Your attorney, what was his what was it? his name was John Smith. That was the dude that got you caught up in this that wound up turning all the um wound up telling on dude there was a drug dealer or whatever? That was that was the situation that happened with um with the Chicago sh and uh, me having to go in front of a grand jury and say that I got paid for doing a movie. That's some crazy. Ass he got, so he got, because you know the thing is, 
If you want to never, get it, they never, like I said, they never asked me any questions about mm-hmm. um, what dude did or whatever, whatever. They just asked me, did I get paid to do a movie? Uh, and if I got, your ass would have lied, they'd have, they'd have the tax people would have been coming for your ass and everything else. Now my lawyer, he was, you know, he was in, he was in, the, uh, he was in the sh- with them, which I found out later on. Mm. But he really had a lot of personal dealings with them. So, um, if anything, he told because he knew a lot of their inner workings. I didn't know. Mm. Sh- I met them because I did minister society. And they wanted to do a movie in Chi Town, and just at the time, Menace was the sh- it was mm-hmm. the popular movie. So of course, they gonna go after you know who they feel fits the criteria. I was known for coming to Chicago a lot. I had a lot of people that I dealt with in Chicago, as far as street niggas and just you know concerts and shows and just being there. So, um. That's crazy. So, so he he So he was worse than unknown? Yeah. Damn, that's saying a lot, because unknown was doing some shit. Unknown was unknown was like I say this. When you come into this business, I don't give a who you are. You're gonna get I don't care. You're gonna get There's gonna be somebody who walk you through the door mm-hmm. who's basically gonna have their hand in your pocket as they walking you through the door. Okay. So that was unknown. Mm-hmm. He was a typical, you know, I'm a young, I'm, I'm a young nigga. I'm 17 years old, gang banging and shit, writing raps about the hood. And a gnome saw it as, as, as there, there's my there's my shot. You mm-hmm. get me? So he didn't he didn't do anything though. He walked us in the door. I mean, my nigga Slip did all the beats. I wrote all the raps. Uh a gnome walked us in the door and I was in I was unintelligent when it came to business. You publishing. Was a, you was a kid. Yeah, I was a hood nigga. I didn't know nothing about nigga. I knew crack pieces and 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 and, and guns and fighting at school and shit like that. I didn't know nothing about no business world and publishing and you get me? So mm-hmm. Unknown took advantage of that. He was able to go in and get budgets and pay us what he felt we deserved as young knucklehead niggas running around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened from there. John was a mother who knew the struggles I had came through with dealing with a mother like that. Mm-hmm. And he still decided to steal money. So you found out he was actually taking money too. I had to go to court for some and then they broke out all the checks. That that he was cashing that so, I had no idea about because so he, he had an attorney client privilege account, so he could take checks mm-hmm. that were for me, deposit them into his attorney client account, and they would cash him, and he would keep the money. So when I went to court on some, shit, and I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't got that much money. I didn't make that. Wompty womp. They said bullshit because here's a copy of all the checks you received this year. And I'm looking like, nigga, it was like totaling a hundred grand. I'm like, I ain't seen nothing. I'm over here struggling as a young artist, and you up here in this office just taking advantage of young street niggas, because that's what the game was. Niggas didn't look out for each other. Niggas felt like, fuck it, if I could fuck you, I'm going to fuck you. And that's, that's what happened. F- so, so this motherfucker, how much money would you say he stole? He probably stole over 150, 200 grand. That's a lot of f- Money. Yeah. Well, what year are we talking about? This was in the nineties, huh? This was in the nineties, like the mid nineties, when you know, when when you know, if you wasn't a mother Dr. Dre or Jay Z or whatever, you was a struggling artist because mm-hmm. we wasn't making money like niggas are today. You see, niggas is streaming and doing all kind of shit. that wasn't happening back then. So, if you was getting little publishing checks every two to three months, you depended on that. Shit. Mm-hmm. But niggas felt like that. Shit. Nigga don't deserve. What's that check for seventeen hundred? I'm keeping that. What's that a check for twenty five hundred? I'm keeping that. You get me? Why you out trying to figure out why you ain't making no money? So he got you truck. paying him so on top because I'm pretty sure. And y'all, on top of that, every time I got a check that I knew about, he would take a percentage of. Yeah, he'd take a percentage of being your lawyer because yes. that's how most lawyers work. That's yeah. that, that's how our attorney for the show work. You know, he he's a part of all and our deals. The cold you know what I mean? 
about it is at the motherfucking, when a nigga got busted stealing the checks and I found out the checks, the next day the nigga sent me a bill saying this is why he took the money because I owed him for all his lawyer work. After he was taking money out of his stuff, so he after wanted he to triple play. After he was taking money from the gate and after the courts found the money and showed me he was taking the money, he ran home the next day and he conjured up a bill for all them checks and sent it to me and said, oh, this is why the money was taken. So he had a $100,000 bill. That was the day that I stopped with him and never talked to him again. So he, he, he didn't get locked up about that in Chicago? No, I don't know what happened to him with the Chicago because we separated after that. We had to. Is this dude still in business? No. I haven't talked to John in probably over 20 years. Uh, his son, who used to f with, you know, he used to be my road manager. I just started communicating with him on a low basis uh, through Chill because he was with Chill a little bit. Chill hollers at him. So uh, we started, uh, you know, we communicate. He hit me up. Hey, eight, what's up? What's up? I know animosity, man. It's bit. It's what happens, man. Well, yeah, and plus that was on his pops. That wasn't it was him. On, it's, it's, it's what happens, man. Like I said, if you ain't got f in this rap game, then something ain't right. Yeah, it's a lot of motherf dog that died broke, man. You know, I heard that. Um, what's my guy, Slice Sly Stone? Mm -hmm. I heard he's homeless, man. All them big ass records they had, man. His records still generated a lot of money, man. The problem is that. You know, ownership of was very scarce. You know, mm. especially when they came some niggas out, did. Some niggas were able to be successful at it. You know, Master P. You know, Cash Money. You know, uh, um, you know, but it was very hard for an artist to retain his masters and and get a proper deal from labels. And so, even with the successful of a lot of records. Motherfucker wasn't getting a just do. He was getting pennies on the dollar. You get me? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you know about this, you come from publishing, from writing music, whatever. Niggas is getting pennies on the dollar, man. It's different today to where, you know, you could throw out a song and you could collect a 90% from it. You mm -hmm. get me? You could throw out a record and it could stream a billion copies. You get me? It could stream a billion times and... You you reaping the rewards from that nowadays to some level. Mm -hmm. Back in my days, we didn't have that. So all we relied on was pure record sales. And if a mother felt like you didn't deserve, you know, I ain't finna put a million dollar budget into you. I'm not finna give you no million dollar videos and send you here and have you all. You was a typical write off for a label. Mm -hmm. You get me? Get this nigga 250 grand. He gonna go out, sell about 100,000 records, maybe 125. We gonna write that shit off. And if we want to do it again, we maybe give another nigga another shot. And if not, we tell a nigga here. And when you think about it back then, 125,000 albums, you was generating some pretty good money for the label. Yeah. You was you generating would, that's almost a, close to a million dollars. Yes. So that's why they around and be like, we'll give a nigga another shot. Mm-hmm. It ain't much, nigga, you know. We gave the nigga what, 125 grand. We spent what about we what we gave him two videos. Spent about fifty a thousand a piece on the videos. Gave him some posters. Sent him on the promo tour. So at the end of the day, what we spent about half a million. Okay, this nigga gonna sell about two hundred thousand. He gonna mm -hmm. generate almost over a million and a half back. Mm -hmm. So we done made our five hundred back. And was they keep that other? Was they sharing the publishing with you? Did, did you have a publishing deal with them? I didn't get, no. I didn't have a publishing deal until I, ma I made my own publishing deal. So up until all that time, Unknown was just still in my publishing. Because like, like I said, I'm a young hood nigga. I don't know about that. What the? F what is publishing? You get me? Nigga, I wrote the rap and the record is out. Nigga, give me my check. You that's know, what that's that, that. That's what that motherfucker was, was the attorney's name. John should have been on his ass to get that money back. He should have, but what happened was um, I just wanted to be separated from the nigga. I wanted to be no longer tied to Unknown and Big B, and I wanted to start dealing with the label directly. So basically, that's what they did. Um, 
because I said I wasn't going to record. It. I'm not going to record anymore. Sony, who, you know, Epic, who was like, we like the gangster rap shit. You know, it's making money, so do we want to lose MC8? He just came off a third album, Music to Drive By is doing hell of a good. He just came off a successful movie. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got the number one sound song single, you know, in the country. So do we want to let him walk? No. Kick unknown out and let's deal with him directly. So they split the, they cut the budget in half. He was collecting about 250 260 when I was going through him. When they kicked him out, they cut my budget in half. That's crazy. So they, so you thinking? So you really wind up losing money, kind of? I did, because they figured that I only needed about a hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy-five thousand when they was kicking up two fifty, two sixty. But when I took over the deal, they cut the budget in half. Now, do you think that if you would have came, because you could have been a free agent at that time, right? You could have went somewhere else, right? Right. Did you think about telling them to go? themselves and go somewhere well, else? I, I already knew that, like I said, I had what, maybe when when I split with Unknown, um, I knew I had two albums left with Sony. Mm -hmm. I was ready to leave. I didn't, I didn't want to be there because they didn't know how to deal with rap. Epic had never been successful with, 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 with hip-hop. Never. Uh, they were a pop label. Pearl Jam, Michael Jackson, Sade. Yeah, for sure. Me. They didn't know shit about rap. Um, so I was ready to leave. Um, Menace was successful. I started getting little deals, you know, to produce here and there, me and Slip. So I would meet niggas. So I met um, my nigga Craig Kalman, and he offered me one of those production deals. Mm. And so I said, so you would have been able to go out and sign. That's what that's what Lil Bird and Hawk and all yes, them. Go I had a that. three album. I had a three, basically artist production deal, mm -hmm. and each artist got three albums. So I had nine albums on the table, going through Big Beat Atlantic, and on my last record, Ron Sweeney, who was running Epic at the time, offered me a new contract. But I didn't want to take it because I knew they was full of shit. Epic mm -hmm. didn't know what to do with me. So I turned it down. I went back to Big Beat waiting to get started because I still had one more album with Epic. So when I turned in the last album, they came back with like a million point two for me to resign. And I said, okay. Even though the niggas don't know how to do no shit. Yes, yeah, a I lot of money. I still have 1.2 in my pocket. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Big Beat and was like, since our deal don't start for another year, I won't out the deal. Because they wouldn't let me out. They wouldn't let me out unless I paid them a half a million. That was Craig Calma? Yep. Craig Calma is a scamless motherfucker. Would not let me out there. I hadn't taken a dollar from Atlantic, from none of the albums, from none of the deals, none of that. Mm -hmm. And I tried to get out the deal, and he and they wanted me to kick up a half a million to get out the deal. That's crazy as a mother. Oh, I think the homie Fiend was dealing. I think that's who he was dealing with, man. Um, so I ended up turning the. Epic money down to keep the fucking production deal with Atlantic and come to find out they didn't even want to deal with us no more because that's when they started the 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 ban on gangster rap music. So they did not want to distribute anything related to street shit. So that's So you. I basically got fucked. And so after that, the mother come back to me and told me, oh, I could go shop for a new deal if I wanted to. After they made me turn down the 1.2. And the 1.2 ain't on the table no it's more. It's gone. It was gone. And so I ended up basically had to go after Craig and got ready to sue them because they wouldn't honor the production deal. Yeah, the, 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 not to get all in your business, but you, you got to resolve with them? I got, we settled for a little change. And then I was able to walk. That was it. 
So the nine album deal was off the table. It was out the door. And it was like, oh, well, you can go wherever you want to. And I'm like, huh? So I had to basically fight them tooth and nail myself with no lawyer, none of that. And I had to call them and basically talk sh- until they decided to cut me a check and let me go. Will grow like Pinocchio. We gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Gangsta chronic play.